Good evening, Robert Roskowski alongside Ben Harris here at the historic Walsh Gymnasium where the Scene Hall Pirates were just defeated by the St. John's Red Storm by a score of 82 to 66. Ben, what started out as a solemn day in the basketball world as Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and several others died in a tragic helicopter crash out in California. Scene Hall did hold a moment of silence before the opening tip. But what did you see after the opening tip from the game? Well, once the game started, Rob, and of course, tributes to Kobe, his family, and all those affected and involved in the crash. Once the game started today, there was just a certain energy here in the Walsh that has never been seen before. The basketball world really took a huge loss today, and I think everybody was impacted. But as for the game itself, I think Seton Hall came out similarly to St. John's. They weren't able to get going offensively as well as they might have wanted to. Desiree Elmore, one of the Pirates' primary scorers so far this season, started a dismal 0 for 4 in the first quarter and just they weren't able to get out of that rut offensively for a little bit. Then moving into the second quarter, the Pirates were trying to swing the ball around the perimeter and just try and have four people on the outside trying to look for inside chances to slash inside, but St. John's played great defense against that technique, and it just wasn't working as the Johnnies were just raining from outside the arc. I agree completely. It really seemed that they were well matched coming into this game. I mean, they had the exact same overall end conference record, so these two teams are as close as you can get. And St. John's did start the game on a 5-0 run. It seemed that Seton Hall was playing well defensively, but just could not get their shots to fall. They had plenty of opportunities, plenty of second chance rebounds and second chance opportunities, but they just were not able to have, um, have their shots go in. After the first quarter, they were down two. And after the half, uh, at halftime, they were down 10 points to the Red Storm, which you think that at halftime, Tony Vizella would make some changes, maybe be able to hype up his team, especially uh, outside this uh, um, really excited and enthusiastic home court with the uh, band cheering, the fans were uh, into the game. What did you see coming out of halftime, though? Coming out of halftime, the Pirates just started slow, allowing St. John's to get inside. And also, when they couldn't get inside, they were driving and dishing to the three-point line for just open three-point jumpers that the Johnnies were just raining down with. However, the lone bright spot in that third quarter for the Pirates was Shadeen Samuels, of course, the All-American, the preseason Big East Player of the Year coming into the season. She was dominating all over the court, trying her best to keep the Pirates in this game, dominating down low even when she was double teamed and even hitting three-pointers from the corner. Shadeen just wasn't able to do it all on her own for the Pirates in the third quarter and attempt this big comeback. I mean, they went, they came out of the half down by more than 20. So it's just hard to erase that kind of deficit when you're coming into a second half and trying to start fresh, but you can only do as much as you can. But then moving into the fourth quarter, I just think there was a lot of great scheming called by Coach Bozella. They switched into a full court trap, trying to put a lot of pressure on the Red Storm, and it worked, getting back-to-back -back steals from Lauren Park Lane and Smith, I mean, just great plays on the defensive end, as well as switching to a 2-3 zone, really helped the Pirates in their 16-0 run effort to make this comeback. But it just didn't turn out well in the end. Yeah, that 16-0 run to start off the fourth quarter did seem a little bit too, uh, too little too late. But coming out of halftime, whatever adjustments they planned to make clearly didn't work out too well because in the third quarter, Seton Hall only scored 11 compared to St. John's 23. And then going into the fourth quarter, that's the only quarter that Seton Hall outscored the Johnnies. But at that point, it was uh, too little too late as Seton Hall never uh, led at any point during the game. And really, um, although, although the crowd was getting into in the fourth quarter, they just were not able to will, you know, will it in at the end. What players did you see stand out for you, whether positive or negative? I think Lauren Park Lane really stood out to me. I think she played really well defensively and was a great distributor of the basketball. Uh, I think she got like six or seven assists. It was actually eight assists and eight seven assists. points, so she definitely was one of the bright spots yeah. for St. Hall. I think Alexis Lewis really turned it up in the fourth quarter, raining shots from deep, trying to make this comeback effort happen. I mean, look, going into the fourth quarter, you're down by more than 20. They came out knowing they were going to come back or maybe win this game from behind the arc. They weren't able to, obviously, but Alexis Lewis and her three-point shooting really helped get them within reach at one point in time in the fourth. 
But then, of course, I think Shadeen Samuels was the player of the game for the Pirates. I mean, led the game in scoring and just really put on a show on both ends of the floor. Without a doubt. I mean, Shadeen Samuels, 24 points, 12 rebounds, a double-double. Alexis Lewis, you mentioned, also had a double-double with 16 points and 10 rebounds. But Shadeen Samuels played all 40 minutes of this fast-paced, very physical game. Whereas, you mentioned before, Desiree Elmore, just completely lifeless in this yeah, game. Yeah, 3 for 11 from the field, just not what you want to be seeing from your leading scorer. And in only 17 minutes of play, she was minus 21 on the floor, which is just remarkable. I mean, Seton Hall only had two players in double, in, in double figures in points. Uh, a couple players had good performances, but St. John's overall just really outplayed them. I mean, five different players for St. John's were in double figures, and overall they just moved the ball well. They could go to, they had multiple threats. Did you, what did you see from St. John's? I saw some really good offensive strategies from the Red Storm. They were really hammering home, especially in the second and third quarters, this strategy of driving first and then dishing out to the three-point line because the Pirates were biting on all of those slashing drives and they were just kicking them out to behind the arc for open three-pointers and it worked and it got them ahead by that much. And obviously physicality played a factor in this game. There was a technical foul, there were a couple scuffles, 30, uh, 32 total fouls in this game. What can you talk about that? Well, uh, to be honest, I think there was a lot of ref play going on. I think there was a little bit of excessive calls for both sides tonight, but uh, I don't know. Everybody was a little aggressive. Seton Hall's losing on their home floor to a big Big East rival. Uh, I think there was just a next level of intensity in the room tonight, and uh, everybody tried to bring their A game, and just uh, the Pirates fell short. Plenty of rivalry and plenty of history between these two teams. Maya Jackson for the Pirates is the only player that fouled out. But now going forward, how do you regroup? How do you bounce all, uh, bounce back from this game for the Pirates with, George, with the game against Georgetown coming up on Wednesday? I think they just need to play to their strengths, you know, get the ball back into the hands of Shadeen Samuels. Hopefully Desiree Elmore can get going again. And I think Lauren Park Lane and Alexis Lewis showed a lot of star power tonight. Uh, Lauren Park Lane just really impressed me on the offensive distributing end and defensively with her uh, tight defense in the full court trap. So like we mentioned before, there were a few bright spots for the Pirates, but overall a disappointing home car loss to this uh, St. John's Red Storm. With the loss, Seen Hall falls, falls to 12-8 and overall, 5-4 and in conference play, and St. John's jumps over them in the standings as they go to 13-7 and overall and 6-3 and in conference play. After the game, Seen Hall will be traveling to our nation's capital on Wednesday to face off against the Georgetown Hoyas on Wednesday night. So once again, for Robert Oskowski, Ben Harris, have a good night.